so today we're just going to go through tournament. We're going to go through what was the good, what was the bad. Um, I'm going to give you guys the opportunity that we got from a volunteer who's willing to teach you guys VAR. So for those that are interested, we're going to set up some dates um, and let that happen. And then we're going to, I'm going to show you guys where the results are so you can read through your ballots. We're going to review what is a ballot. Why do I keep hearing these terms? And then we're going to talk about what is our next topic for next tournament because you're in public middle public forum, which does a topic that changes every three months. By the time we go to our next tournament, it'll be a new topic in December. OK, so before you ask, no, no evidence is available. The way evidence becomes available is they send me that large varsity champions brief evidence. And from that champions brief evidence, it takes me about a week to turn it around and make the bottle evidence, which only has three arguments in it. So that is the timeline of when you guys can expect um, the evidence to be available. But for the next couple practices, next week we have a guest speaker and then the following week we'll just branch into hopefully the VAR evidence will be available so we can have a more in-depth conversation about the topic that we'll be doing for December and how we're going to get ready. The structure for public forum never changes. So even though we'll be practicing new information, the structure stays the exact same. So how we prepare, how we research, What's good evidence, what's bad evidence is exactly the same. Nothing changes on that, just the topic. All right? Okay, so let's get into it. I want to know, you guys' feedback, what was some good, what was some bad about tournament? Anybody can start. Y'all can say anything, like nothing's going to happen. I can't jump through the screen. You could be honest with me, like it was hard, it wasn't, what, what was it? I don't know. I wasn't there. I think it was like pretty nerve wracking, you know, just getting up to speak. And it kind of felt relieving when you were kind of asked a question, you know, where you can like kind of, you know, say something based off something else rather than having to format your own argument, your own question. I thought, yeah, so it, it was definitely hard. Thank you for being honest with that. I appreciate that. Who else? Who else? Give me some feedback, y'all. I think it was hard that I made a speech that looked long on paper. But when I actually said it, it was only a minute long. What about the award ceremony? Did you guys like it? Do you guys feel like we should do something different? What? The award ceremony was cool. OK. So I want us to feel like as we come to practices that we are doing good stuff because we are and we're awesome. So how about this? After our second tournament in December, I'll be nice. I'll buy y'all beanies. How's that look? That sound like a goal mm -hmm. we can have for finishing our second tournament? Yeah. Give me some claps or thumbs up if that's a goal we could set as a squad of like, we'll do it for the beanies. I'll even be nice and maybe let you design it. You're like, yeah, if it's sure. appropriate, nothing crazy. You're like, but I'll do that. Let's set some team goals. I know we can't usually in the in you know, bottle history is we usually are able to like, you know, have pizza parties or talk, you know, all that kind of stuff. But I think I think that we should um get some some gear, some squad goals for middle school showing that we're holding it down and coming strong. So I want to set a yeah. goal for everybody. Second tournament, we're gonna get some beanies out of this. So in December, we'll have beanies. I didn't go to last tournament, but I know about like for the past two years about like how it was when it was non-virtual. <laughs> so, you know, Nikki, we're going to give you something. <laughs> yeah, but it was more fun when when we were just in person, like like you can feel like like it was just more better when it was like non-virtual. It was just it was just way more fun. When we do come back, we're going to give you guys so much love. You know, we miss y'all too. We're just happy to have debate, like, accessible online for right now. So I want y'all to know, like, yeah, we appreciate y'all. We want to shower y'all with the swag. Even if you haven't been to a tournament yet, it's going to be your first one in December. You know, if you rocking with us and you coming to practices and I see that hard work, you know, I want to give you a beanie as well for holding it down. So we're a team. And the more we go throughout the year, we're going to hit landmarks. And I want to celebrate you guys for it. So I'm going to work on the beanies and putting some designs together and see what y'all like and we'll vote and get them ordered for us. So they'll be ready by tournament. 
are we gonna have a like te- like our coaches like la- like last year how I had my um what's it called my debate teacher but she's not a debate teacher no more are we gonna have those Mrs. Of Latoya is still a debate coach you guys should be starting up this week Nick oh yeah because she I haven't heard nothing from her so okay I'll text me here I'm gonna put my phone number in the chat for y'all Nikki text me because Mrs. Latoya is supposed to be starting this week Miss Natalie and Miss um and the, Mrs. Latoya have been working on it Miss Glass is her name not Natalie I'm sorry okay so yeah, text me though, and I'll put you in the group with that to give you some more updates. Anybody mm-hmm. else got tournament feedback about Saturday or anything they want to talk about? All right. So now we're gonna go into our results. So I didn't put the link here on accident, but hold on. Let me t- take us to the right one. Again, results is only going to show us who came in what place. So if you're a little confused on what you came in or you want to see for what you got on this first one, go ahead and check it out. So do we have a new topic? Huh? Do we have a new topic? So the new topic is in the middle school chat. Hold on one second. I could show you guys how to always look it up because I don't have it on me. So public forum topics. You can Google it. The next topics um, you're going to get from speechanddebate.org. That's the national debate website. Again, the type of debate y'all do is public forum. So if you're ever confused, middle school only does public forum. It's loading. I have slow internet. So as you guys see, it's like different types of debate. Here's a public forum. Here, I'm about to actually put it in a chat. I keep forgetting. I could just share y'all with stuff now. You can save the website. Here is the public forum debate, September, October. So again, your tournament is going to be in December, the next one. The new topic is November, December. Resolve, the United States should adopt a declaratory nuclear policy of no first use. So... Some, we're basically saying the United States should adopt that they will never use a nuclear po- nuclear weapon unless somebody else uses their first, which is quite controversial for the United States because we do not have a policy like that. So that is next month's topic that we'll be working on. I'll have uh, stuff available for y'all. So then results. Results can be found here. I just shared y'all a link for it in the Google Drive. Here is the team awards. The way team awards go is this is a combined award between you and your partner who you work with. So this is rewarded upon your wins and losses, how many points you guys got, right? So here's the winners for last weekend's tournament for the team awards. And then if you're looking at speaker awards, that is for your individual speakers. So not only are you rewarded for, you know, winning the round with you and your partner, but how well you perform as a debater when speaking is another part of this, right? So you want to be able to get high speaker points as an individual too. And that'll say, oh no. And that'll tell you how you're doing as far as explaining your plan to people. So if you guys notice Golden State, who are our outside guests, were the people who got the highest speakers in our tournament. So all of you guys got to work with Golden State, I'm assuming, right? Yes, everybody hit Golden State. So the coach of Golden State, this is the opportunity I was talking about. The coach of Golden State would like to offer that he will give you guys a free two two practices on a Friday for people who are interested in competing in VAR so y'all could be ready to go against his team in December. So... I wanted to give you guys that option before I agree to it. If anybody's interested in doing VAR at our next tournament, just because I don't have the capacity to teach you guys VAR, um, I, I can't take everybody and split y'all up. I'm one person. But because he volunteered his service, and I know a lot of y'all reached out to me about being VAR for our next competition, um, I think that's pretty cool that the coach of the rivals that you guys had, who clearly know what they're doing, has offered for those that are willing to go into varsity that he'll do two Friday practices with you guys. So if you're interested in that, just put in the chat bar 
and I'll know to sign us up for those practices and I'll send more information to you guys in the uh, middle school chat on Slack. I'll send you the dates, the times and all that stuff. So if you're interested in that, just put VAR in the chat so I know to let him know that we're interested in doing that. Okay, no problem, Sylvia. If you can, join on on your phone if you want. So any again, put in the chat, VAR, if you're interested in going to the next division and you want to take me up on those next two practices, they are going to be hosted on Friday evenings for just giving you a heads up. But I think it's worth it. This is the competitor telling us that he is going to train y'all. So anybody interested in doing VAR by December should do this practice and let me know in the chat just put, by putting VAR. So next week we have a guest speaker. Her name is Eileen McAndrew. She is the Alameda County Juvenile District Attorney. What is the district attorney? Um, the district attorney is the juvenile division of the district attorney's office is responsible for the prosecution of persons under the age of 18 years old, known as minors or juveniles. So that's you guys. If you were to commit a crime, she is the lawyer that would prosecute you. I mean, she's the one that brings you to court, holds you on charges. Um, in the state of California, as in all states, there is a separate court systems for people under the age of 18. Um, so that means that um, I don't know if you guys have heard it a lot, but it happens when there's like high profile crimes that minors commit and they try to make the argument to stay in juvenile court. That is because juvenile court held, holds less time than adult court, right? So sometimes you'll see people at like the age of 16 get bumped up to uh, 18, well not 18, but get charged as adults. That means that they wouldn't be under Eileen. They would go to adult court, adult court. But if you were a minor and being charged as a minor, meaning an underage person for a crime, Eileen is over to Alameda County. Alameda County consists of Saliandro, Oakland, Hayward, Alameda City, um, San Lorenzo. So if you live in any of those areas, she would be your juvenile district attorney. So I wanted us to put together some questions on what we think we should be asking her um, in preparation for next week. What are some questions, you guys? What What's interesting about that breakdown that you guys found? So if we were to cause any damage to like anything, like let's say I break into a store, um, she would be the one to help me out in that case? No, she would be the one fighting on behalf of the, the store and the state as to why you should prosecute. I mean, why oh, you okay. deserve to go to jail. So also, if you guys don't understand how our law system works, it's not necessarily if like you're a good or bad person, right? Or maybe that you, you needed a second chance. It's more so about proving, did you commit the crime? So it's like, did you run over that person? Yes, you ran over that person. Here is the time for running over that person. It's not really about what led up to it, how we got here, things like that. It doesn't really come into play. It's more so yes or no which is why it's so important for you guys to understand policies, right? When we're talking about how laws are formed, because whether you will know, know or not doesn't make you exempt from either being hurt from those policies or help from those policies. What are some questions you guys think we should ask her? What, what interests you about that position? Yes, Ella. Just what is it like being a lawyer? Got you. Um, my question is, is there like a common counterpoint that's often used in like um, in the hearings that she does? That's a good question. What else, you guys? How does she feel if like what let's say she's going to get like, let's say I, I People, people accuse me of doing doing something, but I know that I didn't do it. And I think I believe that she knows that I didn't do it. How, how does she feel when that happens? Like, or does she ever feel that? Like, does she ever feel that someone is innocent? You should ask, I'm going to write these down and send them to her. Do you feel, do you feel or empathize for the cases you have? Because it's still her job, right? Yeah. 
that doesn't make you a bad person just because you do your job. That's what our our democracy is built on too. So keep that in mind and be open-minded, but that's a great question. Sophia A, yes. So it depends on how serious the crime is. So um, an example of a case I think about is a couple of years ago in Richmond, uh, a young woman was killed by a minor, a 16 year old, I believe. And it's controversial because he was still, he was charged as a minor. And because Richmond's district attorney wanted to charge him as an adult and felt that it was, uh, that because of the seriousness of his crime that they needed to charge him, the district attorney quit his position to uh, support that justification that they should have, they should have charged him as an adult. But I want us to be aware that saying that kids should be charged as an adult is very scary because children are not, adults are not ready to be incarcerated. And it's a big problem in our system of who and how people get incarcerated. So thinking about, you know, a minor could be anybody, it could be your brother, sister, cousin, any circumstances could lead to somebody going down this pathway. And so we want to be aware that, you know, as young people, y'all brains are not fully formed either. Like, you know, you make a lot of irrational decisions, you know, think about the stuff you do that you don't get caught for. So if, if somebody sent you to jail, let's say from something you did at the age of 16, by the time you're 30, you're a totally different person. The way you think from who you were at 30 is totally different from who you were at 16 because life experiences have shown you different, right? You think different. The world has shown you different. You're learning different stuff. So, you know, you said six years old. That was Sophia. What experience do you have representing juveniles? That's a good question. Mm -hmm. uh, is your practice currently devoted exclusively to juvenile law, or do you work in other areas? If so, what areas? Something like that. That's a good question, Sophia, to ask her. If you guys are interested in lawyers, another thing to know is like um, lawyers work in all type of law, right? So don't think that it is just law, criminal law. It's all type of law available. So we're going to have guest speakers when they want to come and speak to y'all from all kinds of backgrounds. So don't think it's always just, well, if I'm a lawyer, I'm going to either be helping crime or defending crime. Like it's not like that. It's a whole arena of what a lawyer does and why we need more lawyers. Um. What experience did you have to get your job? Good question. What is a typical work day like? What is the most challenging case you've worked on? Anything else you guys want to know about criminal justice or like a little bit more background if you would like to know what to ask her about? How do you prepare for a case? What uh, uh anything else you guys want to know about uh let me see if I can look up some Oakland juvenile charged as adults because Oakland is a place where that could happen. So first thing that pop up, remember we're using our research. Former football star charged as an adult in juvenile armed robbery case to be released. So some football player from a climate high school. They said in a few weeks, former McClimas high school football star Dejan Ford, who was 17, remember a minor, when he was arrested as an adult. So they tried to charge him as an adult for armed robbery. And he's been waiting for nearly four years and we'll, and we'll get to see his son for the first time. So he was also a father before he went to jail. Um, but at the age of 17, he was arrested. And think about that. For four years, he sat to wait for trial on a robbery case. He entered a no contest plea in exchange for a year of probation. And upon his probation, he will have the felony charges reduced to misdemeanor. So he had to wait, again, four years to make sure he wasn't charged as an adult to try to get a, a no contest plea in exchange for him not having to do no more time, but he stayed on probation. And probation is where you still have to check in. Even though you're free, you still have to check in with the system and show them that you're doing um, good things for yourself. Let me see if that 
Richmond case comes up. Because that one was more recent. And I know I spelled juvenile wrong. So right here you see a boy 11 years old. So remember we said like serious crimes. So it says somebody that was 11 was charged in a, rob a Richmond robbery to be in juvenile court. Try to juvenile court. The state won't allow anyone younger than 14 to be tried as an adult. So think about that. Some of you guys are about to turn 14, right? Like you guys will be 14 pretty soon, or if not already 14. Well, you know, y'all wouldn't be 14 in middle school, but you're about to be 14. Could you imagine being tried as an adult and going to adult prison? So that is what California, yeah. So Alameda County, again, she is over Alameda County. She is the person that re not requires, but fights to persecute or prosecute. You got prosecute middle schoolers, not middle schoolers, prosecute people who are juveniles of California. How long have you practiced criminal law? That's a good question. What is educational and professional credentials? That seems scary, to be honest, to be only 14 and going to an adult jail sounds terrifying. That does sound scary. But that's the reality for some people. There, I'm sure if we were to look up cases, there's countless cases of people saying they've been in prison all of their adult life since they were children because of the crimes they committed. And as you see, it could be something like a robbery, a murder, and I'm not justifying these actions at all. I'm just saying, could you imagine being in charge and dealing with that at the age of 14? And some of you guys are almost 14. I just don't think your mind is there to rectify all of that. What advice would you give somebody who wants to be a lawyer like you? Any other questions we should ask her? We got somebody saying, I feel like young people who commit murder deserve to be in jail for maybe a couple of years, but robbery, no. What subjects did you take in your undergrad? Good questions. I mean, like I said, there's countless cases of young people who have been um, incarcerated. And as you see, the state of California says by the time you're about eighth grade that you, you're you conscious enough for whatever crime you commit, you could possibly be charged as an adult. Now, how many of y'all knew California would charge you as an adult by the age of 14 if you did something? How many of y'all just knew that before now? Was that even on your mind? One person and how many, there's 14 people in this call. So think about that. One out of 14 even knew that was a possibility. Wasn't it 16 a while ago? Yeah, so it depends on the crime. You hear more of like 16 year olds, but as you see an 11 year old, they had a headline even saying that they were trying to prosecute him, but the legal state limit is 14. I know that you cannot get life as a child anymore. And that was under Obama. Life for minors was removed. Yeah, I, I knew for some cases it was 14, but I don't, I didn't know this for like most of them. I thought it was like for very few. It, so again, remember we talked about before state by state law versus national law. So criminal justice is a state by state thing. Like, I know we like to think like, well, wouldn't the police department be handled by like a national police department circuit or a government agency that like control all of them? Absolutely not. You guys are the ones that's going to have to fight for that as young adults. Like there's not, it's a state by state, county by county system. And so they are the enforcement to all the laws that we break in. Police do not make up laws. They are the enforcement to the laws put on the books by the people. So we vote for them, they enforce them. So think about it. If these minority communities aren't voting, but are the ones most impacted by the decisions made, meaning that the young people are out committing crimes, for whatever the reason, crimes are just happening, poverty mostly, if they are not making the laws, but they're the ones most impacted by those laws, I think there's a real problem with that. Because it didn't stop crime. Did, did, did it stop crime in y'all neighborhood just because you charged a 14-year-old? 
No, you can't kill minors. There's no death penalty for minors. It, you just can't give juveniles life. So before people was giving ju like giving juvenile life at the age of like 17 and 18, you can't do that. It was found inhumane to punish somebody that long as a juvenile, take away their whole life. So you see a lot of people coming home who were formerly incarcerated for life. Um, they were coming home as like 40 and 50 year old people. That's a, again, who you are at 40 and 50, I'm sure is totally different from who you were at 16 and 17, right? I don't think anybody, if you ask your parents, are they the same person they were at 16? They probably don't want to talk about it. They probably are not going to lie to you and say, I was painting ice. <laughs> and then I met your father and we were happy. Like, so no, like you're probably going to be a different person than who you present. Sophia had another question. I want to ask them, have you met any juveniles with a mental disorder and you figured out while nobody else knew and that most likely the reason they committed that act? So I think a good question is, does mental health play a role in some of these cases, right? I have a question. So what if you're like a juvenile? Can't you like, what if they try to like question you? What if, does she question you? Or, if you were to take the stand, it's still a court case. You still have court. Oh, yeah. Because if it were to investigate, it's like if people were investigating and they're like asking you questions and inter interrogating you, um, don't, doesn't your ha your parents have to be there? Like you don't you you don't have to answer. Like you're not supposed to answer because your parents aren't. If your parents aren't there, aren't you not supposed to answer? Let's see. Yeah, I think it's a. I think I think that's again state by state. And remember. Every state, every county is ran differently. So California must have adult present during interrogation. That's probably spelled so wrong. Because I was watching Netflix, the documentary where they use these three African Americans who um, were accused of, of raping uh, a woman, but they didn't do nothing and they, they responded while their parents were in there. And so they they all kind of like play themselves because um they didn't know who they were talking about and they're just accusing each other they didn't even know who they were for tournament if you guys want to if you if you i'm sorry i heard you nick thank you for sharing that i just seen this in the chat if for tournament if you guys see that you would like to do something uh i mean have a partner or choose another partner just let me know on slack we'll do pairings for partnerships for that tournament, just confirm who's partners before the 16th of December, I mean, of November. So we won't do it this practice, but we'll do it in like the first November practice. We'll go through partnerships again and pair everybody up. So if you're looking for somebody to be a partner or you want to update yours, just let me know. You can Slack me. I know that one, the one in New York, right? Nick, yep. You guys are all talking about the same thing. So what you guys see me Google is California. I wanted to follow up on what Nick was asking of what, what California had going on. So this article was written in 2017. It is saying uh, basically, hold on. California Jerry Brown, and this again was only signed in 2017. So California Jerry Brown has signed into law three bills that recognize young people's vulnerability to abuse and their capacity to grow and mature. Human Rights Watch said today, the bill signed October of 2017 will protect children in, cust in police custody, limit prison terms for youth and young adults, and offer young people a chance to rebuild their lives. So that was signed in 2017. It was also the Miranda Rights for Youth. It changes the law so that police cannot interrogate children 15 and under until a child has a consulted with an attorney. So again, think about that. Some of y'all were alive in 2017. Well, I hope all of you were. Um, that just happened. That's something to really think about. Uh, before that, do you think a 15-year-old could handle interrogation being accused of a crime? And again, this is only in California. This is a state by state. The governor of California signed this, not the president of the United States. You live in California. Yes, Ellie, you got your hand up. Um, I have two questions. My yep. first one is, do we got to keep our partners from last time the same partners? If you want to, yes. Okay. And then my second question is, what is incarcerated? Prison. 
a nice way to say prison. It's just jail, prison. Any other questions? Y'all can ask questions at any point. So yeah, California had allowed, before this, California had allowed child of any age to be interrogated by the police with no provision for consult or contacting your parents. Children have been allowed to give up their rights without even understanding them. In a recent case, a 10-year-old questioned by police said that he thought the right to remain silent meant the right to remain calm. In its original form, the bill would similarly have applied to 16 and 17 year olds who need who also need this kind of help, but amendments limited the protections to people age 15 and under. And then, so do you understand what, what the Miranda rights are? Do y'all know what Miranda rights are? Wait, you say one time? Do you guys know what your Miranda rights are? Nope. Okay, hold on. So your Miranda rights, because I'm writing down a question. Good question, Sophie. Has she dealt with a murder case before? So like debate, we always research it. So we're going to look up what is Miranda rights. Gonna look it up. Fifth Amendment, Miranda rights. The term Miranda rights come from a historic 1966 U.S. Supreme Court called Miranda versus Arizona. The court held that if a police want to question and interrogate you, a person in custody, they must tell them of the Fifth Amendment protection against self-incriminating statements and their right to attorney, meaning that you do not have to speak without a right to attorney. The police are supposed to let you know that um, that you are not, uh, you do not have to speak to them without an attorney present. Um, the following is an overview of the Fifth Amendment rights, including what police must read you um, and the rights and what they what happens if they fail to do so. So you should know as soon as you're pulled over, they should be telling you why they're pulling you over, what was the justification, and then they should be telling you if you are then saying if they are accusing you of the crime and like taking you into custody, they are supposed to read you your Miranda rights, meaning that you are known not to say, like you don't have to say anything or respond to them or anything because any anything you say will be used in the courtroom against you, right? Because they're not your allies. They're not here to be your counselor. So if you get in trouble um, and you're like, oh my God, I didn't mean to steal that candy bar, that is going to come back in court. <laughs> like They're going to be like, yeah, we don't know why he said that to us, but because you said it and it was like live, you're going to jail. So what are your Miranda rights? This is the outlines of it. You have the right to remain silent. So you don't have to say anything like I said. Anything you can and will say will be used against you in a court of law. So remember that's that omission of, oh my God, we should not have stole that candy bar, bro. Yeah, now you and bro are in trouble. You have the right to an attorney. So that means just telling you, you don't have to speak. You get an attorney from either the uh, county you're being arrested by, they'll give you a, uh, a defense attorney or you can hire one. If like they said, and if you cannot afford an attorney, they'll appoint one for you, meaning that if you can't afford it, because some people can't, you are still given the right to one. Any questions about, about that? So Miranda roots are rooted in the Fifth Amendment protection against self-incrimination. So the petitioner, Ernesto Miranda, confessed to a violent crime after two hours of police interrogation and signed a statement that he confessed with the full knowledge of my legal rights, understanding any statement I make may be used against me. However, he was never explained these rights. So again, they have to make it clear to you what you're doing and how it's going to impact you. You just can't do it. So the court ruled that interrogation was coercive in nature and that he wasn't informed about his right to an attorney. So if you do not have your Miranda rights read to you, it's also like they, inadmissible evidence. It's kind of like how you guys debate and you couldn't bring up evidence in the rebuttal, right? You're not allowed to. It's the same kind of restriction on that of like, you can't just uh, force somebody into something or have them, uh, you know, 
say, oh my gosh, I confess to this without reading to them that they didn't have to confess to that and that they were uh, legally given a lawyer and they could have made those statements to the lawyer. Um, so you'll see a lot of that on like first 48 when the people are talking to him and stuff like that. They've been written, rib, they've been uh, told their Miranda rights already and they're choosing to just speak with them, which means everything they say is going to court. Questions about Miranda rights. Is an, is an attorney, is it just the attorney you have the right to or your parents to as a minor? So remember that provision in 2017 said as a minor, you're, they now mandate in California that you need to have your parents there, parents or a lawyer present. So if you don't have parents, whoever's responsible for you is supposed to be notified that you're down there. Again, you don't have to make statements. So if you got arrested for stealing a candy bar today, if you sat there and said, I want my parent present before I say anything, they got to go get your parent. They're supposed to go get your parent anyway, but it just helps you to not have anything on file. Any other questions about that? The laws, how this works. We got about 30 minutes left of practice, but today was just a preparation and reviewing everything. Again, I'm gonna send y'all y'all ballots once I get them downloaded. Sorry, I couldn't pull them up so we could go through it today. Is it just an attorney? Yeah. Anybody else got questions we could ask her or anything interesting you think she does? Uh, what colleges she went to possibly? Uh, what law school she went to? How long did school take her? How much was school? If you guys are looking at law school, you know? Uh. What else, what else, what else, what else? What else would you guys need to know about Emily? I mean, Eileen, what was your longest case? Anybody else got questions about juvenile justice or uh, Alameda County or anything like that? How Alameda County does law? Again, uh, every police department is ran differently. So, um, and there, there are different type of police, right? So the sheriff is different from your local police department, is different from the FBI, it's different from, uh, <laughs> it's different from BART police. So remember when Oscar Grant was killed by BART police in 2009? That is not OPD, that is a different branch of government different branch of enforcement. So Alameda County is par paroled not only by the sheriff of Alameda County, you also got Oakland Police Department and Highway Patrol. So it's a lot of enforcement, right? It's a lot of ways to get tangled. So the thing about tab room, if you guys have questions, when you guys filled out the bottle registration form, you guys cannot use your student accounts. Again, I'm gonna say this, you cannot use your students accounts because it bounces back emails. So I do not have a way of knowing if you signed up for tab room using your student account, only you do. And if you feel like you did that, then I need you to slack me and tell me the correct email that you have that you're using for tab room. And it's no problem. I gotta repeat this every time because it's a lot of people on the forum with student, uh, with student emails. And what we're seeing is that we just can't email y'all student emails. They're only, the settings are only set to receive emails from y'all schools, not outside people. So it's no problem. Yeah. That was a, any other questions about criminal justice, California youth minors? What's the difference? Can you go to state prison as a minor? Yes, you can. What's a serious crime to go to prison for? Let's see. See how beautiful Google is? They know exactly how crazy you are. I hope my Google searches don't come up in a crime case like, and here is what this nut was looking for. And then y'all gonna have to come like, she was trying to help us. <laughs> so in California, minors who are arrested for committing a crime are generally not treated as the same as an adult. Crime committed by minors are often adjudicated as delinquency matters in juvenile courts, 
which exists to rehabilitate rather than punish minor offenders. So remember, people are usually trying to go into juvenile court, remember, because you could be 14 and start getting charged as an adult, depending on how serious it is. So if you're a juvenile court, they're really trying to rehabilitate you, meaning they want you to be able to come home and rejoin society, but you have to be punished for what happened. So, however, a minor may face traditional criminal proceedings depending on the seriousness of the crime. While California law prohibits prosecution of children less than 14 years of age, some situations call for minors, sorry, so in some situations, a minor who is at least 14 years old may be tried as an adult. In fact, true, in fact, California law specifies certain crimes in which a minor 14 years old must be prosecuted in adult court. You slack it to me if you're doing a partner change. Yara, that's a good question. I'm going to write that one down. What can you be tried as an adult for? So as you see, it is a three-year age gap that says only three years that you could be in minor court and possibly tried as an adult, right? So between the ages of 14 to 17, so that makes you a high schooler. So again, how many of y'all knew by the time you hit high school, if you went out and did something dumb with your friends, you can be tried as an adult? Were you aware of that? Your friend go steal something. You're in a car with him. Your friend got a gun in the car. You're in the car with them. Y'all get pulled over. You could possibly be tried too. Did you guys know that? That's something you should know, but they're expecting you to know. So again, just even if you don't know, it can still apply. So it's telling us, what can you be tried as? A prosecutor, which is who we're going to be talking to. Um, she may, he or she may file a petition for a fitness hearing of juvenile court. If the juvenile court ju judge finds the minor unfit for rehabilitation, the minor will be referred to prosecution as an adult. So that means they ask a judge, not the judge that's trying your criminal case, but they first ask a judge to make the determination that the seriousness of your crime, as we've seen, that could be robbery, could be anything. Yes, Sophia, the seriousness of your crime means that we should send you to adult court and your case should now be heard in front of adult judge. So that's one. Two is a direct file to adult, adult criminal court at the discretion of the prosecutor, meaning that they don't even want to see if you're, uh, if you're competent enough to be a young person and retry it. They think that whatever you did was so bad, you need to go straight to adult court. They don't even want to see a judge about it and try to fight for you straight to adult court. And then two, an automatic trial as an adult for certain predetermined aggravated offenses for an eligible minor. So that means if you've been to juvenile court a couple of times and have other cases, they're automatically going to try you as an adult. So do you see how those kind of level up each time, right? So again, it's only a small window you could be charged as a minor. And even it's a smaller window of what qualifies for you being charged still as a minor, depending on how serious it is. How many of y'all knew that? Does that make you feel good, bad, nervous, aware? How's that make y'all feel? So, so. Anybody else? So if you guys are wondering what will go into that hearing, um, what goes into that hearing is the degree of criminal sophistication exhibited by the minor, meaning like, did you know what you were doing was a crime, right? So they don't want to know how you felt, things like that. They want to know, did you know when y'all stole that candy bar that it was illegal? And if you say yes, that means you're competent, that you knew you was doing wrong. Whether the minor can be rehab rehabilitated prior to the expiration of juvenile court's jur jurisdiction, meaning that they think that before you exit out of juvenile court, whatever time they give you, they feel like you'll be able to understand you were punished and return back to society. So they got to examine if you're ready for that. Three, if you have any previous history with the courts, it'll be held against you. So if you have a history of stealing candy bars, that's going to harm you if you're at court. Uh, the success of previous attempts by juvenile court to rehabilitate the minor, meaning that if you went to juvenile court before and you keep coming back to juvenile court, they're going to send you back because they see that even though we tried to help this person, they clearly got a problem, bump them up to adult court. And then five, the circumstances of the offense alleged in the position 
in the petition have been committed by the minor. So if it's a dangerous crime, you're definitely getting up to adult court. Questions about that? Here are what qualifies. So here's all the beautiful crimes that they listed for you to go to jail for as an adult. I know y'all did not know this, but here we go. First off, murder. <laughs> like, if you didn't think that, definitely murder. <laughs> like, arson. You'll get bumped up as an adult. So you got a fire bug in you. You keep starting fires. You're going to prison. Robbery. I'm not going to say that one because it's children on here. That one's children on here. That one's children on here. Another children on here. Kidnapping. Kidnapping for purpose of robbery. Kidnapping with bodily harm. Attempted murder. Assault for a firearm or destructive device. Assault means or forced to likely produce great bodily injury. Assault means fighting. So you were out there fighting. Um, discharge of a firearm into an inhabited or occupied building. That means doing a drive-by on a building. Uh, committing an offense against an a, a, a old, a elderly person over the age of 60. Personal use of a firearm or use of a gun and you're done law. So as soon as you use a gun and you're a minor, automatically they're gonna bump you up to an adult. An, a felony offense in which the minor personally used the weapon, so you are the shooter in a case, you're getting bumped up to an adult. Um, if you intimidate a witness or bribe a witness, you're getting bumped up to adult court. Manufacturing, compounding, or selling an ounce or more of a solution or do, selling drugs, you're getting bumped up as an adult. A violent felony, you're getting bumped up as an adult. You escape or use force or violence from a juvenile hall. So maybe you ran away from juvenile hall. When they catch you, you're getting bumped up as an adult. Torture, aggravated mayhem, meaning you start a riot. Carjacking, you're getting bumped up. Kidnapping, kidnapping during carjacking, a drive-by, exploding something, or voluntary manslaughter. All of those are ways you will be bumped up to an adult and prosecuted. Um, what are the uh, things that you can face? At worst, as a minor, you'll only be in California Youth Authority until age 25. So again, that's why people try to stay in juvenile court because let's say you committed an offense at age 14 and they say, okay, yeah, we can rehabilitate this person you'll be able to come home by the age of 25. But say you're, you're now prosecuting as an adult, you are you can almost get life or 20 to 30 years. And that's a big difference. Yeah. So that is the good and the bad of the laws, what she does, how she enforces them. Again, the background is not necessarily how you did it. It is, did you do the crime or not? And what is the crime for, what is the sentence for doing that? How did, again, how does that make y'all feel? I never knew carjacking would bump you to an adult because if you did that to get away from a bad person and they find you and they have evidence, yep. So if you're carjacking people, that is definitely a way to get bumped up to an adult case. Yeah, Ella? What's carjacking? Stealing somebody's car. Like taking a car with a person, carjacking is still in a car with a person in it. So it's not just like the car was parked, it's like taking somebody out of it. Just like kidnapping is, even if I grabbed one person and moved them from my living room to my kitchen, that is considered kidnapping because I forcefully moved somebody without their consent. And that is kidnapping. The moment you move them, even if you move them from your living room to your front porch, that's kidnapping. You can't do that. What if it's your child? Nick. <laughs> like, well, yeah, I, don't, I don't know. It, it, you mean like a parent dispute or you mean like you're calling the cops on your parents for forcefully moving you? <laughs> like, I, <laughs> I'm not getting into that about you calling the cops on your parents for forcefully moving you. I don't think that counts. <laughs> like, like, I feel like if that were actually to happen to you, like, they, the only force they really have is um would be basically like in-house punishment like taking away your xbox so i don't know i don't really feel like that would happen don't call the cops on y'all parents and claim there's a kidnapping happening you're gonna cause so many problems in their adult life like they're gonna have to get a job and explain why there's a false kidnapping charge for their child having a breakdown about being snatched like 
This might be off topic, but is this your computer? Or is this someone else's computer? This is my computer. So, do you let anybody use it? Uh, yeah. I mean, the kids. Why? What are you saying? Oh, because I saw Epic Games there. Oh, my baby use it. Kai played a game. Oh, Kai. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I don't Kai. Play, I don't play video games. Kai play video games. As y'all can see, like. <laughs> If y'all don't know, I'm a mother to a seven-year-old. Usually, y'all would get to know him. He's at football practice right now because he's still playing football. But I got a seven-year-old. I know I look super young and fashionable, but I'm somebody mama. That's why I talk like a gangster. I, I can't be nice. Nobody listens. No, I'm not a gamer, unfortunately. I was a Harry Potter nerd, and I was on the wrestling team when I was in middle school. I joined the wrestling team. I like to fight a lot. I had to get out of that habit. Because you'll go to jail, as we all just saw. <laughs> like I learned very quickly. Like I use Discord because I follow a conspiracy group. Uh, I feel like a nut following them sometimes. I don't agree, but it's a conspiracy group that I'm on on Discord. So if you see that, yeah. <laughs> Any other questions about criminal justice, youth criminal justice? I got a passion for it. I love to let you guys know what's going on and how you hear how you guys feel if if the adults making the laws are straight up crazy or does it make sense? You know, I love to hear that kind of stuff because you guys will be voting in like the next four to five years. So it's important that y'all know. Any other feedback? Oh, Sophia, I'm sorry. I thought I had, uh, I meant to put Sophia Agnon. I'm sorry. It just, just ignore it. My bad, my bad. Any other feedback? I want to hear from you guys in preparation that y'all want to know. You can just unmute yourself and say it or put it in a chat and we can read it and discuss it. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm sending it to the wrong Sophia's. Ignore it. <laughs> Y'all can put it in the in the chat. Do y'all want to know anything about um, Oakland's criminal law enforcement or anything like that? Wait, so I don't know. Did you see the topic yet already? Yeah. And if you scroll in the chat, I gave the website for where you guys can find the chat too. You <clears throat> can find the topic. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or feedback? All right, last piece. So Oakland, if you guys don't know, um, bye Leo, see you next week. So just to have uh, some background knowledge to know. So the unique thing about Oakland is we have a gang, and we have a murder focused group, an OPD called Ceasefire. It's not a gang enforcement. I'm sorry if I'm not coding it rightly. It's called ceasefire. Ceasefire was invented by, I think, Baltimore, which was to create a system in which the police could talk to active gang members and people who are doing uh, crimes like murders and stuff and either prevent or let them know that if they don't stop that they're going to go to prison. So they try to interrupt these lives and try to give alternatives before they arrest them, right? So Oakland has a gang program called ceasefire. The way they collect this is by using data. So the same evidence like you guys read and learn about, like, you know, that you guys just demonstrated reading in y'all debate rounds, evidence is the same evidence that's used against your peers. So let's say you get on Instagram and in your bio, it says, I'm part of shoot 'em up clap clap gang. You're now on Oakland's gang watch list because you've associated yourself to somebody. So let's say you're also on probation. So remember how we said you got caught up in that web of juvenile justice. They know where you live. They know who you live with. And now you've also associated yourself as a gang member online. All of this is called data. And all of this is put into your file of who you are to, to make who you are. So what they do is call you in for a meeting and tell you, hey, we think the things that you're doing or we are accusing you of things. We think because of that lifestyle, you're going to... uh go to jail or cause harm to somebody else. We are either going to give you a way out and give you some programs to use, or we're gonna send you to jail for the next 20 years. So 
that is something that's like interesting to know, right? Because most of you guys don't know or aren't really accountable to what your friends are doing. But this is Oakland's gang program. So they also tap phones. That's a way to collect data. Again, they're using all forms of data that the same way data y'all read against you. So if you ask your parents, there's a law that just got made that said that um, there's a law that just got made that said that they want to switch to a cash, a cashless bail. Do you guys know what that means when I say cashless bail? You guys know what that is? Okay. Cashless bail means, uh, cashless bail means that instead of paying to get out, let's say you commit a crime, you're supposed to put money down to say that you're going to return back to court. It's called a bail, right? So they saying that while you're being accused of this crime and waiting for trial, they're not going to let you sit in, sit in jail. So they put a bail out. Or either you could be released on your own recognizance, which means that they trust you, that you're going to be responsible and come back to court. It also depends on how serious your crime is. So, uh, you know, let's say you uh, you got into a fight. A fight means maybe you'll probably, depending on how bad the fight was, you'll probably be released on your own recognizance in a couple of days so you can go back to your life and your life won't be interrupted, Right. Let's say you got into a really bad fight where a knife got pulled. You might have a bond on you, right? So that means that you're going to pay money to say, okay, when my court day comes up, I'm going to come back and I'm going to be fighting to prove my innocence from outside. So that is a, your bond, right? And that's an important thing because if you guys have ever heard, oh, what's his name? It was a young man in New York who was on Rikers for five years because his family couldn't afford to bail to pay him for $500 and he was a minor. So he sat in juvenile court from, I believe he was like 16 for about four years. When he did get out, they, they accused him of stealing a backpack. He didn't steal the backpack, but they accused him of stealing the backpack because his family couldn't afford the bail. He sat in jail for four years and during Rikers prison, which is one of the most cr craziest prisons. It's on an island in New York city um to be on where he experienced real abuse and trauma and then ultimately after those four years he was found not guilty in that time he had developed mental health issues and ultimately he ended up taking his own life when he was released so he's about 21 and he took his life so that is why that's important about bills right so right now there's a um there's a law that's being they're trying to get passed that says that we won't use cash bail systems anymore the problem with this is if we rely on algorithms, which means computers, when you hear people say algorithm, they're meaning computers, then our computers seem, our computers are usually programmed by people that have bias, which is the same reason why when we Google party, only a certain demographic of people is going to come up. We're just going to do it. So the people who created Google, right? No offense to these people that are if they on the call. So I want to look up a party. If you notice, here are all the images of not party city. <laughs> what color people pop up when I type a party? Do you see yourself? All these party pictures, do you see yourself in one of them? I don't know what the hell that is. Excuse my language. Like, I didn't censor this. I don't know what that is. No. So you only, so not reckless people when you see partying, you only see white people because this is their version of partying. The, the same way I'm going to look up unacceptable hairstyles. We're going to see who come up. I'm not saying who it is. You just see me typing and stuff. How come when I type in unacceptable hairstyles is black people with curly textured hair? So if I leave it up to a computer to determine whether I should get out or not, it's probably not going to be on my favor because the people who, who made the computer are biased, even if they don't know it. Although harmless, it's pretty harmful. Mm. And as y'all see, I'm not looking up race. I ain't, I ain't. Who pop up when I say people with jobs? What is this? <laughs> like, <laughs> I 
I'm sorry. <laughs> like, now y'all gonna be Googling all type of stuff. <laughs> like, <laughs> I know you probably never thought of it before, but that could be a little bias if you was looking up people, right? Or let's see, when I type up black people, who pops up? If I was just looking up for black people. Couple selfies. George Floyd, murder victim of police brutality. Couple pictures. An aged Obama. I don't know what he's doing here. Um, <laughs> like, okay, let's type up dancing party. Who comes up? Everybody dances. I don't see me. Chris Rock, exactly. <laughs> Whatever this is, like. So exactly, that's a real problem. So this is the problem with like algorithms, right? Like even though um, people don't mean to do harm, right? It still can be that the harm is still done because inadvertently people have biases. And if they don't check their biases, making sure that they're seeing the world from somebody else's lens, then they're probably going to hurt somebody they don't even know is being hurt. The color people like to dance too. Yeah. <laughs> like, so any questions about that? That is it, y'all. Have a good afternoon. Thank y'all for attending practice.